Hello everyone, Fred Jones here and welcome to another episode of After School Guru Presents. Today our conversation is with Dr. Ginger Shea and Danali Perez from the Oxnar School District and the Oxnar Scholars Program. In this episode, the team from Oxnar shares some of the amazing work they're doing with their staff and discuss the topic, how do we take the task of learning online? I was blown away by the collaborative spirit that we saw in the district and how the after school program was embedded in the district's response to support students and families during the COVID crisis. You can find links to the Oxnard School District and the Oxnard Scholars Program in the video description. So let's get started. Thank you for watching and please hit the like button or even better, leave a comment and let us know what you think. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon and welcome to After School Guru Presents. And this conversation that we'll be having today with um, Danali Perez from Oxnard School District and with Dr. Ginger Shea from the Oxford Scholars, Oxnard, Oxford, Oxnard Scholars, all right? So we are very excited to have them come in and share their knowledge on uh, the topic of expanding learning into online. My name is Fred L. Jones. I own a company called After School Guru, and I'm really excited that I partnered with the California After School Network to create this webinar series. Uh, I see Troy just popped in. And the whole idea was trying to provide support to the field right now in the times of this madness that is COVID. You know, that's it. I just got off a call and we were talking about how COVID has become the answer to everything. Oh, this is had COVID. Oh, I can get this COVID. You know, so we're all in this kind of world where we're just reacting all the way to all of these things that are happening outside of us. And what we try to provide here is a space where people can learn about techniques and strategies to deal with it. Not only to deal with it as an educator, as someone who's supporting students, families, parents, and yourself, but you know, but to take care of yourself, right? To make sure that you're taking care of yourself and that you're giving yourself the tools that you need to be successful. Because we have to fix ourselves before we can go out and fix anybody else, right? So. Before we get started on that, I want to just say hello and introduce who's here. I introduce our guests and we'll have a much longer introduction with them. But I wanted to introduce a couple of folks who I can't do this without. Number one is Miss Beth Pine. All right. Beth is going to be our co-host for this uh, workshop. Beth is from the Mendocino County Office of Education in Fort Bragg School District. And Beth is also one of the TA fellows from the Expanded Learning School of Leadership and Facilitation. I had the honor of serving as her growth coach. And she is an amazing facilitator, a wonderful spirit. And she's agreed to come on board here to kind of help us facilitate this dialogue. So Beth, you want to say hello to everybody? Hello, everybody, and thank you, Fred. And um, I am the one that's honored to be able to work with Fred. Oh, stop. I only paid her a little bit to say that, just a little bit. All right. And so <laughs> next, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Troy Selby from the California After School Network. Troy was instrumental in saying, you know, as I said, I, I have a lot of friends who I'm able to come to and say, I want to do this. And they're like, yeah, Fred, whatever, do it. We'll got you. We'll, we'll support it. And Troy was one of the people who jumped on board and said, yes, let's offer this as a resource. So Troy, you want to say hello really quickly to everybody? Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join. Fred, man, I, you're giving me too much credit. This is, this is your brainchild. I'm just happy to be a part of it, and, you know, in true collaboration for supporting the field and what you do um, is amazing. So thanks for taking the time. Uh, no, my pleasure. My pleasure, my friend. Without further ado, I want to start turning this over to our wonderful guests, uh, Dr. Shea and Ms. Perez. Now, ladies, I know you have your title. Is it okay if I call you Ginger and Danali? Is that okay? All right, cool. So Ginger, let's start with you and then we'll move into Danali. So we, I just want to really get a brief introduction from you. I have your bio here and I know that you've got, a, you've got a, an incredible bio. Let's just put it like that. One of the things that I love is that you've been working in after school here for a long time, 20 plus years with the after school education uh, and uh, safety funded programs in Title I District of Oxnard. And I also really appreciate the fact of all the committee works that you've been doing. Um, we've all know that the uh, California After School Network is huge. We know the California Department of Education because of the funding has a lot of moving parts. And it's people like you guys who are in there doing that work that really supports that. So I appreciate that. And I, I didn't know though that you co-chaired the Summer Learning Implementation Committee. So I'd love to learn a little bit more about that because I love summer learning. And finally, congratulations on the, uh, having being awarded, your programs being awarded, the Distinguished After School Health Dash Award. So that's a wonderful thing. Absolutely, give you a round of applause for that. So um, now that I kind of give you that introduction, would you introduce yourself, tell us who you are, and just really briefly, how did you come to be here in after school? How did you come to be here? 
Well, um, nice to meet everybody today. Um, I, this is a, a great showing of people from all over the state, which is really nice. Um, I, uh, I had the opportunity to apply for a position that was after school. And I've been here um, ever since, really, um, working with the city of Oxnard since, since I came to after school. And um, it's a really wonderful partnership. Um, I think it's really wonderful because um, they are really the experts in youth development and um, working through the recreation department um, and cultural and community services, I think is now the, the, the correct title. Um, we've been able to take the best of both worlds to design and create our program. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, Denali, I am so sorry. I do not have your full bio in front of me. So I'm going to have to rely on you to tell us of the, all the wonderful work that you've been doing in your history leading up to here and to your work with the Austin School District. Hi, everybody. So, um, yeah, I've been working after school. Uh, I've been a, an employee for the city of Oxnard since uh, 2007. And uh, I started out by working in after school, and I've been working up the ranks since then, um, working primarily as a recreation lead early on, um, then became a site coordinator all within after school, um, youth programs. I've worked, uh, we have a, a mobile activity center um, over the summer, so I've had some experience on the community, uh, providing services for the kids all throughout Oxnard. Um, so a lot of my experience is mainly through youth programming. Awesome. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. So I think what we're saying, and this is what I love when, when I spoke, uh, both mentioned this to Ginger at the very beginning, we were putting this together and I thought it was going to be just Ginger. And what I love is she said, no, she said, no, I need to bring my team on with me. And that to me spoke a lot because what it says is that Ginger recognizes the idea of, yeah, we have our program, but we're part of the district. We're part. And so and I see that from the way you ladies have worked. So tell me, uh, this is my question for you. What do you think has been the biggest contributing factor for you to have that viewpoint? Like what, what allows you guys to think like that? Because I can see that you're very much in synergy. How did that happen? Because that's not something that just happens naturally. Well, I think, I think at the end of the day for us, um, the main focus is, is the kids that we serve. So the kids in our community are really the driving force behind, you know, what we do and being able to establish that partnership for, for them has really been the. Yeah, we lost your last word, but I think we got the, the gist of it. Ginger, did you want to add anything to that? Um, I, I really do think that it's the acknowledgement of um, their skill set in being um, really great youth developers mm -hmm. and um, really employing um, a young workforce to come in and be excellent role models for our, our children. Um, you know, they all live and grow up in the community and they're coming back to serve the kids in our community. Um, so, uh, you know, the program staff really are a reflection of what, um, our, from, of where our, our students come from. And then, you know, the other side of that partnership has been um, to access the curriculum and the pedagogy and the things that the district does. And so the partnership by having the district and the city working really closely together creates sort of a seamless transition for our kids into the after school program and um, creates a real strong environment for success. Mm, I love that, I love that. And I think that, again, the, the way you, the language that you use speaks to it. I think a lot of times when we think in terms of after school programs, especially from the micro lens of looking from just our site, when we think in terms of the stakeholders, we tend to think of just, oh, the principal and the teachers and stuff, but it's the district and it's the city and it, all of those people are stakeholders in, us, in, in this part. Mm -hmm. So I think that's huge. And now let's take that whole idea, right, of this, a synergy of communication and now let's apply this to this crisis okay now you got this you got this great program that's rolling along you know you got this wonderful curriculum you have this wonderful union and now all of a sudden kids go home we got to figure this out what have you guys been doing and let's go ahead and start to get into this topic of how you really focus on expanding learning into the online environment so um this has really been interesting. Um, on the, the grant is awarded to the district and we partner with the city to provide our program, but we also have several other contracts that we have to enhance our program that we use and work with together. 
Um, so I'm going to navigate a little bit through that and then really expand and let Donnelly expand on, on how um, the Oxnard scholars um, have stepped up and are producing some content for us. But um, you know, from a district perspective, we contract with some, some fairly small businesses. Um, our hip hop program is um, a group of like eight, eight people working together to go into the community and do hip hop and all of a sudden, boom, everything stopped. And now they're, quite, they're unemployed or they're you know, having to navigate their contracts. And so I really looked at the contracts we have in place, um, worked with our director of um, finance to um, figure out how we could continue to work with them and pay them to continue to be part of our program. Mm -hmm. And it's through our hold harmless language that we've been able to do some of that. And um, they have been providing us access to content that not only is just shared with our after school program, but is shared with our entire district. Um, and that is for every one of them. Um, wow. I've, we've been working to populate content on our after school program page with the school district and I can navigate there and share my screen in just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but working with them has, um, working together with them to provide some content has been really great. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that one of the, I think the best ideas came from the scholars program, which is um, working on some videos that could be shared. One of our hurdles is, um, sorry, that one of our hurdles is um, how do we get this information and content to our students? Our after school program isn't necessarily connected electronically. So we are working to use our OSD TV channel. Um, um, our Facebook page, the city's Facebook page, and um, Donnelly, I, they're getting it out on the city's channel too, correct? I, I believe that's, that's the goal. We're not quite there yet, but that, that would ultimately be the goal, yes. And so just, and, and, and Ginger, just for clarity, I just want to uh, clarify a couple of things. So when you say, number one, give us a scope of how many students are we talking about? Well, our program, our, our after school program serves on any given day between 2,500 and 3,500 students. Okay. Um, depending on the day and our junior high flux of, of, of how kids attend. But our district is um, 15,000 students. Okay, good, good, good. And then the other question it is, is you... A, it's a K-8 um, elementary school district. K-8. Perfect. All right. And when you say OSDTV, tell us what that is. That is um, a channel that it's like a public channel that's been given to the district to air and broadcast our board meetings, oh. as well as any other content. So from the after school program, we're pulling together fitness um, and, and other types of enrichment that will populate that. But our ed services department is pulling together um, really early learning videos uh, and activities for kids in TK k1 because they might not be so strong at navigating an ipad oh okay I so love we're that. working we're working to populate that so the schedule's been made i think a couple of things have gone up this week on the osd tv but eventually the goal is to have a lot of the content just cycling through and i know that that's what the city's planning to do on their page as well wow. and on their their channel that's amazing. That's amazing. And, and I'm so, I'm really so impressed by that because I just literally got off a call with some folks in New York and they were talking about this issue of equity, right? How we have so many students who don't have internet access and you guys have created, figured out a way by just putting it on public access channels. But that's, I love that idea. That's such a great strategy. So that's why I want to really draw attention to that. I'm sorry, please go ahead. That's amazing. Love that. So, um, I'll screen share again. Um, from our district webpage, you, know, you can come from the home page, go to departments, go to um, after school program um, here, and then it, it links in. And then on the left hand side of our page is where we are sharing um, lessons and activities so that our school sites can link to it or folks can navigate. So we've got um, some of the videos from the scholars program. Donnelly will talk about that in a minute. But over here we've got um, 
the lessons that are coming in from Art Trek, one of our contracted providers, and they're providing us um, simple um, how to, and they're providing those in English and in Spanish, uh, mm -hmm. which is, is a huge deal because the, a large portion of our district is Spanish speaking. Under the um, Let's Get Moving, our partnership with Hip Hop Mindset, they publish a 30 minute video on a daily basis. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is hip hop, Tuesdays and Thursdays is cardio. And so they're posting their videos here for kids to be able to access them from um, a, a YouTube channel and um, get in to see, uh, participate in, a, in an activity. Now, these, these and the art lessons and anything else, any educator, any adult, any child in our district has access to these right now. And um, that's because Hip Hop Mindset has said, you know, if we, can, if we can continue to work together, we will provide this and you can use it in whatever way that you want to. What's really nice is um, by having our program create its own content, we're not limited by FCC rules to be able to share. And that's a big deal. Right now on our page, we have um, Let's Get Reading. And I don't have anything there right now because we're still navigating um, copyright and um, trying to find books that are in public domain that we can share. And so even though we've got um, a lot of publishers we're hearing like Harry Potter has opened everything up, they haven't really opened it up to put it on a TV channel. They've opened it up to put in a Google Classroom where you have to log in to get to the content and it's not totally public. Yeah. So we're navigating um, that, trying to find things that we can do some read alouds and bring in some familiar faces in the district to be able to do the reading with, this, with um, students. I know we have um, Miss Morrison on the call here <laughs> <laughs> and she's got books and we're trying to figure out how we can get her reading some of those books. Um, Miss Mo uh, is a uh, former principal, former principal in our school district and comes back and does a lot with the Oxnard Scholars Program. Oh, I love that idea, I love that idea. So um, Donnelly has been working with her team and I'm about to turn it over to you, so if you need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting that last I, thing, I just, right? right. Just want to the water. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Donnelly is gonna talk about um, what ideas they came up with and how um, she's been navigating and doing things with her staff and her team. Right. So, um, you know, obviously with all this happening, we were trying to find ways to, you know, keep our keep our staff working and um, keeping them active uh, or, you know, connecting with the kids, not just within our, our after school program, but within our community as well. So as Ginger mentioned, um, you know, we're, we're working on videos that are being pushed out through our social media. Um, our Oxnard Recreation social media page on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and basically every week, all 20 of our school sites are working as a team to create videos um, that, you know, touch on the creative side. Uh, that's how the, they're divided on the, on the school district page um, or, you know, getting them active. Um, so there are, there are all kinds of different, um, videos that the staff are coming up with on a weekly basis. So every Friday, they'll upload their videos. We, we're we big on Google right now because that's the easiest way for us to get access to what they're working on. So every Friday, they're uploading their videos. And, um, you know, the ones that have perfected their editing skills and are, are becoming their own little directors, uh, we're moving forward. And that's what we're pushing out to, uh, you know, families to have access to. I love that, Danielle. Danily, sorry, my apologies. The question, the question. So when you talk about this idea of your team, right, how did you get them to work together remotely? What were the strategies that led up to that kind of remote? Because obviously they're functioning well. What were some, how did you guys make that work? So I think, well, Ginger kind of started it out with just introducing them to Zoom to, to start out. And then from there, um, throughout the school year, before this even happened, I was trying to, to make the, the transition over to um, using Google 
the Google Suite just so that this way we had access to everything because we do have events that go on throughout the school year and that was the easiest way to to get access to you know the numbers of participants for our events and things like that so um, in terms of our staff they had already kind of established um, or experienced using remote access through through Google so when it came to you know having meetings and things like that sharing with them how to use the Google Calendar so that they're able to connect with their staff and as I mentioned zoom um, that's how they're able to meet with their staff on a regular basis so each site is having weekly meetings to discuss what their ideas are for for their videos each week and uh, they've been able to establish plans and ideas moving forward that way oh love it, love also, it. i'd also like to chime in because i think this is maybe a missed piece piece frequently every one of our site coordinators has a laptop that's been checked out to them um, which really assists with the um, technology integration um, and just before we shut down, it was make sure you take your laptop with you. Because <laughs> and sight cell phone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they get a they get a cell phone and a, and a, and a laptop. He's, oh, I love that. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So good. Good. So now, it's, um, Daniel, you wanted to show us some some video. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and uh, share screen. The first video that I'm going to be showing is kind of like a a recap that encompasses everything that our staff are participating in. Um, and let me pull that up. One of the things that uh, while Donnelly is navigating to the next video is that every Wednesday the after school program staff are helping with delivering and, and giving food in partnership with Food Share um, here locally. And that has been a big endeavor. I think they've, they're feeding over a thousand families um, on Wednesdays and, and that's, that's really huge and their work, their help and lifting the groceries in and out of the car. I think Donnelly, you were telling me about how sore your shoulders were after the first week. <laughs> well, I yeah, I'm not even I'm not loading anything into cars. I'm just waving cars over. So I am I've perfected the the signs to get people to stop and to go. But um, yeah, it's 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 been a lot of fun. Um, while it's 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 very tiring work, but uh, it's it's been really rewarding and, and a lot of fun for um a lot of our staff from what they've shared so it's it's been great to experience that wow well it looks like it's fun i mean you can see it you can really see the joy that they're having and and whoever that the staff was who dressed up in the costume i mean number one where she get that costume like <laughs> you know it's like awesome I, I love that amazing amazing so uh, I'll, I'll move on to our, our second video and this is from our uh, mcauliffe after school program um, and this is just one of the samples of the, the many videos that we get from our school sites. Hi hey guys. guys, my name is Ms. Lopez. My name is Mr. S. My name is 
My name is Miss J. My name is Miss Saya. My name is Jasmine. From all of us, Connor's not just good for We hope that you are all staying safe and healthy during this time. Today we will be showing you guys how to sign the alphabet in American Sign Language. Let's get started. A. B. C. D. E. F. G. H. I. J. K. L. M. N. O. P. Q. R. S. T. U. V. W. X. Y. And Z. Now you guys try to keep up. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V. W, X, Y, and Z. Now you know your A, B, C. Next time, won't you say it with me? Now, we challenge you to learn how to sign your name. Thank you for watching. The video projects have been really great. It's actually something to look forward to watching and reviewing as they come in. Um, and then as Donnelly and I are doing it separately, there's like a message of, oh my gosh, this was awesome. <laughs> so, um, that's been a, a really great part of this. Um, another part of this virtual um, after school program time that we have right now, and, 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 and I, time is what we have. We have the time to meet with each one of our site teams to work on CQI and we've partnered with CAN. So Troy has been working with us um, alongside Tiffany to meet with each individual site team and talk to them about what were their goals this year? What did you accomplish? And what would you like to focus on for next year? And that time is a gift. I mean, when have we been able to sit uninterrupted and have the entire site team for as long as we need to in order to accomplish something. And, you know, I think that normally looks like us meeting with the site um, coordinator and then the coordinator taking things back. And, and now we're able to include everybody. And um, we were just talking this morning about how we can continue to meet with them and um, maybe get some of our fall professional development done before we leave for the end of the year, mm. which I think is huge. Yeah. And, um, the other is um, ways to connect with kids. And that's what we're trying to figure out right now. Um, given people are using their cell phones or their, their own, you know, some of our staff may even struggle to have their own inter like internet at home as well. So finding some ways of connecting with kids. Uh, we had one site coordinator who's been connected with her kids through Class Dojo. And she's had some students reach out to just check in and say, hey, this is what's going on for me. And um, she's been able to stay in communication with them. So we're looking into some of those. Um, some uh, could, other you, ways could, you, could you let us know what Class Dojo is for those who are not familiar with that? So Class Dojo is an app that was originally created to help with classroom management. So you could set up a, a roster of your students in there and you could give points for certain behaviors and you could actually take away points. And as it's evolved, it's now a system of communication because you can send that information home to parents or you can communicate with students. And so it's become a platform that has the two-way communication to it. 
Love that. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, you know, given that we are running out of time, Donnelly, is there anything else that you'd like to share? I kind of whipped through those very quickly. <laughs> no, I, I think I think we covered everything. Yeah. You could tell in the video how we've been working with people remotely because you could see someone's living room and then an office and you know, all the different backgrounds and it's been really neat to see how they edit things together. Um, I think they've been using iMovie, Spark, Adobe, and then I think there's been one other program that they've used. And how, is, how is that it's free. Trying, how, and so is that something that you guys told them about? You said like these are the things that we, and did you provide support and training for those particular things or was it all on their own kind of like figuring this out? We, As of right now, it's, it, it, it's been all on their own in terms of, of figuring it out, how to use it. Um, the last meeting that we had with everybody, uh, Ginger did do just a quick uh, preview of, of what to look for. Um, but all of these, the resources were shared with them prior to even having that meeting with them. Um, and we also, you know, let them know if they ever had any questions on how to use something, they're more than, we're more than happy to, to help them navigate through any of the apps that they're, that they're using to edit. Okay, awesome. All right. So, Number one, thank you so much. That was such great and so motivational. I, I'm inspired now, and I have to say that inspiration comes from being on a horrible call um, that not for the organization I was working for, but the message that they were saying in other parts of the country, they're making the choices now that there will be no after school next year. They're already starting to say, we're just, because we, and this is the logic they're saying, because we need to use that stuff for things that we need. Literally, I'm sitting in a meeting listening to people. And so when I see this work, I say, no, what you need to understand is that after school brings value. There's a lot that you can do if you partner with your after school programs. And I wanted to scream that at the meeting and I wish I could have dragged those people to this call so I could say, you would rather just, you would rather buy materials than have these professionals creating this stuff and getting to know your kids. Come on. It makes no sense. So thank you so much. I think this is so powerful today. What I think is really important and I think is apparent is that there was a, stuff like this doesn't just happen in a bubble. And it just doesn't happen from the middle down. It doesn't happen from the site level down. What was the directive from the top that opened up the space for your staff members to do what they wanted to do? What was the messaging that came down about, okay, we're in this crisis now. This is what we're going to do. What was that? Because I think that, must have been unique and different that spurred your staff members to feel like they had the ownership to do those amazing things and to have the flexibility in the space. So, so what was the message from the top? And actually, uh -huh. Ginger, I don't want you to answer it. I want Donnelly yeah, I know. to answer it. What I was going to say is, Donnelly, this is on you. Yeah, I want Donnelly to answer this. I was, was, I was on my way to unmute my mic. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think more than it, I mean, a lot of them had the question about what what happens next once they heard that you know schools were shutting down until the the first date that was given and so you know more than anything i i really wanted to explain to them that obviously you know we have a great partnership with the school district and you know trying to get it figured out to where we can continue having them work and really encouraging them to find ways that we could contribute or connect with the kids in our in our program was really the the focus on that so you know keeping them as positive as as i could within that time just until we got final word of yes we were able to move forward with um you know all of all of this going on um and so it was in a meeting that i i was having over at at the recreation office about how we can keep our staff um, working and the videos was something that was brought up and it was it was an idea in terms of just you know working through the the recreation social media and then you know once we started talking with ginger it was it was something that it it kind of evolved into you know spreading it to every every outlet that we had so you know the staff have had great feedback about you know just being um, happy that they're able to to produce these these types of projects and videos. So it's it's been a great um, a great resource that we were able to provide. Yeah, amazing. Okay, now Ginger, now I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Is there anything you want to add to that? Because I think she spoke very eloquently. Oh, I promise. I promise you, Fred. All I was doing was unmuting. <laughs> 
to say, Donnelly, can you take this? <laughs> <laughs> the videos, the video and the inspiration for that came from Donnelly. And as, as it's been created, um, she's been giving feedback, like, gosh, you know, it'd be really great. I think we had it early on an origami lesson with white paper on a white table. So it was hard to see. And just giving those notes back to the staff to see what they, what they can do with it. Um, I, I think the videos are phenomenal because as I, I typed in the chat, the city has built a really great relationship with the students they serve. And that is, that's why they're there working with the kids. And um, because of that, when the kids watch these videos, they're going to see familiar faces. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's one of the things when we all meet in Zoom like this, it's like we get to see and interact with people that we, we are disconnected from right now. Absolutely. And I think that that's a connection that the video projects pulled together for her, uh, for the, that pulled together for the staff. But the videos, I mean, that, that came from the city. Um, that was a, an idea that they had. And I was like, let's do it. <laughs> and as that's gone forward, we've um, added to it and said, okay, great. Now let's do a little bit longer fitness video. And as I found out today, I think 15 minutes is our max to upload to our website. So we're now looking at where else can we store videos for the students? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I'm, I'm so impressed. All right, so Troy had another uh, uh, comment that he wanted a question. So Troy. I just, I just want to take a moment and really recognize that, Fred, the question that you asked, neither of them will actually call this. What you're, what you're looking at and what you're seeing is true collaboration and true opportunity you know, they, they both speak to it. I have the fortunate ability, to, like they said, to work with both of them. This, ha this started happening because of the supports that Ginger and Donnelly both come to co-create. Okay, there's a partnership and there's a collaboration there that I think is, it needs to be called out and it needs to be recognized because that they, those people that are creating those videos, those people that are doing and creating the curriculum and things like that, it comes because they feel supported and they feel like they have the platform to be able to do that. And that's because of these two women that are, that are sitting here sharing some of this. It comes from their leadership. Absolutely. But I just wanted to, I just needed to say that and, and tell them both here that I know that it happens because of what they do. One thing um, I wanted to do though, is before we leave, we're gonna do a processing process, okay? We're gonna go through a round of oral questions. This is a, an, an integral part of the training for those uh, staff members or who've been involved in the Expanded Learning School of Leadership and Facilitation, of which um, Patricia, who's on the call, has gone through it, and Beth Pine is gonna lead us through that. Now, I understand that it's 226 and this is supposed to be an hour, but I would love for you folks to stick around for another 10 minutes to allow us to kind of wrap this conversation up and just go ahead and wrap this out in a nice formal way. So if you have to leave, we understand, and I appreciate you being on the call, but I'm gonna turn it over to Beth, and if you'll give us just about another 10 minutes, and then we'll be able to wrap it up and we'll be able to let you guys go. All right, so Beth, you ready? I am, I am. All right. Um, I'm gonna piggyback, I was, uh, uh, Dan we made a comment a while back about this being an uh, opportunity that we wouldn't normally have. And, um, and um, you know, not to be like Pollyanna about the, the um, pandemic, but it has given opportunities for people. and. And so we have this opportunity um, to connect with our kids differently. And so, um, so just wanted to, first of all, make a couple of observations and, um, and then uh, do a little self check-in. So the first observation is that um, we are connecting with kids. And we are connecting with families, and um, and I've been on enough um, calls with enough different groups to know that we're all connecting in one way or another, and um, and that's that's what is the most important is that that we're connecting with our kids, um, and um, the second observation is that we are all in a different spot where technology is concerned. And um, another shout out to 
to Danley uh, that says that saying that. Um, sorry, I got to plug in my computer. Wouldn't you know um, that, that these kids um, that these kids are getting some awesome videos that are so um, professional looking. So just to take a minute to um, do a little self reflection on what is it that that your kids, your families, your community needs for connection? And um, where are you in the technology process? Like for me, um, I still try to open my laptop from the hinge side. <laughs> and um, the, you know, like the touch mouse pad sends me like through the roof. I can't figure it out. It mystifies me. So where are you at with your technology? And that's where you're at. Like, it's just a self-reflection. Where are you? How do you feel about it? Is there a mental block? Um, is it insurmountable? And so just, um, so I'll just take a, a like a couple of um, responses. If uh, thoughts about that, um, connections, um, technology, just a couple of responses from the group, if I could, if anybody wants to share. Okay, I see Patricia. Well, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm not very tech savvy. I have no social media. I don't know how to post anything. So that's all a challenge to me. All of this is new. I don't ever take selfies. I don't do any of that stuff. So um, I shared, I did a video with our kids that we're gonna put out and I shared with them. I learned how to put backgrounds on Zoom. So I'm learning, that's about like all I've learned. <laughs> but um, so, I mean, I feel okay navigating the basics, but other than that, I don't know how to put videos together or anything like that like to edit them i'll figure it out though awesome that's i mean that's kind of the thing is that we're all for many of us some people already had an idea of how to do all this and for many of us we're just trying to figure it out as we go and i got to tell you from my experience the kids are doing um are helping me get through that is there anybody else that wants to share anything um about you know how they're connecting with the community and or their technology, Elizabeth? Thank you. Yes, I was just gonna say that I, I'm fortunate to work with a younger group of uh, Corday teachers, and so they're very skilled. And so I've been pairing up with the fifth grade wing to, uh, to get videos out and play family trivia games. So I feel fortunate to have that, that ability because uh, I do need some help. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that out, Elizabeth. Um, maybe one more. Is there anybody else that wants to share? Okay, so I'm going to do, since um, since we're like already over time, I'm just going to do a quick wrap up with you. I want to ask you just one quick question and hopefully everybody will um, take a moment, think about it and share out with me. Um, and thank you um, again to Ginger and Danley really enjoyed um, seeing what you guys were doing. Um, so my question is thinking about connecting with your kids and thinking about um, what we've seen today or talked about today. What's next? What's next for you? What, what are your next steps? What jumped out as um, something that you really want to um, incorporate or what are you thinking um, would be a great thing for next steps for you. And um, what I'd like to do, I don't wanna put anybody on the spot, but I'd like to just go in the order I see you on my screen. So guess what, Fred, you're the first one. <laughs> I'm gonna figure out a way to tell the story of what's going on down in Oxnard so people will see this. I think it is really important that we show that at school freaking matters, I'm sorry. I, I know that I'm on this trip because if you had been on that call I was just on, you would understand I was infuriated when I left it because they just don't get the work that you guys do. And so this is such a great visual representation of this is what we can do when we partner 
with our after school is don't see them as something that we can just write off and say, oh, well, we'll, we'll do that in another year. No, you can't. So I, I really appreciate that. I'm very inspired by it. So yeah, that's what I was, that's what I'm doing. Thank you, Fred. Uh, Jesse, you're next on my screen. Was it me? Yes. So, uh, um, so I think for us, uh, you know, we started with, with them, with the kids seeing the content, uh, but a lot of the things that we're doing now, it's kind of like we did the challenge or kind of incorporate like an action item for them to kind of share that and now making them the creators of content and kind of evolving that and taking that next step forward. That sounds wonderful. Thanks, Jesse, for sharing that. And thanks for being on the call today. And Pam, I have you next. Okay, I think uh, the next step uh, for all of us is when we're able to physically be back with our kids that we don't take the time um, and relationships for granted. Because now I think not having that contact with them, with building that relationship, um, I think we all kind of miss it. And so um, I think that's what where we need to go, remind everybody of that when we are able to get back with them. For sure, that's great, Pam. And yeah, the, what the kids I talked to, man, they miss, they just totally miss um, seeing your faces, hearing your voice. Um, Dan, well, you're next on my screen. Basically, uh, kind of piggybacking off of what, what uh, Pam said, you know, um, I think the next, the next step for us is really sharing that with the staff about, you know, not taking the, the time that they have with the kids for granted. You know, we're, we're, we're obviously working on a technology on the technology side and and creating these videos for them but i think once it comes down to actually being in the classrooms with them is really taking advantage and and using that time wisely you know connecting with them when they're there and ginger um you know i um i think really the next i mean literally the next step is to really push this out to get kids to jump in and access the the content um, but, you know, long term, um, it's very likely that we're going to return to this type of environment in the fall. And I think planning out and preparing, um, building systems that make it a little bit easier to support our students when they're not connected to us at the school is going to be very valuable and is worth a huge investment of our time right now so that if we ever have to do this again, we can um, stay connected with our kids at home. Thank you, Ginger. And um, Wendy? Um, for me, I'm definitely going to take the front door fiesta, so I'm going to try to make it a thing um, over here in my little Fontana. Um, but then I also think that this was really inspiring. It makes me excited um, because I'm the kind of person that hits the ground running with a thousand ideas to try to see what's going to get a yes. Um, so this is just another one that I want to do. Um, it's been a little secret hidden agenda goal. So now that I feel like I've had the resources, I'm very grateful to have heard of this and got um, like a lot of best practices for me to be able to instantly do this. And I also think because, uh, yeah, I was apprehensive about, oh, let me record myself and then do something uh, <laughs> and not embarrass myself. Uh, but yeah, I think it just made it as simple, um, as, as simple that it could be. So yeah, definitely gonna try to hit the ground running with it. Awesome. Yeah, I love that front door fiesta. Uh, Sarah, are you still there? Sarah, are you there? Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm just trying to figure out the text. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you, Sarah. Great. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, it's just been really hard working from home. All this tech is totally new to me, too, but I'm trying my hardest and my best. So, yeah, but it's good to see everybody. That's great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Vincent, you're next. Hello. So we've been doing our check-ins at both of our sites. So I've been doing two hours a day, Monday through Friday with our families. And I really enjoyed the sign language challenge and I wanna incorporate that into my program. And I've been working with families, mainly the parents to make sure they know that we're here and how to support them. Cause a lot of families didn't know that their students had Gmail accounts, um, even though it's locked into the district because of the age range. So we have been working and connecting parents to technology. And I wanna make sure when this is over and we move into next school year that 
families and our program continues to use this technology to keep students connected. So then that way, if something comes up in the future or the plan power outages or things like that, that we are still connected with students and we can send materials and just keep things on without a hitch. I love that, Vincent, that like, we always want to revert to the familiar and to and make sure that we, we keep it going and, and, um, and that we aren't having to start from square one. I love that. Um, Brazil? Um, hi, Beth. Hi, Brazil. <laughs> Uh, so, I guess I I I, th I guess overall I was really just kind of inspired, and I was on a um, I, I met with my staff earlier, and I was very happy um, just because we sort of had been thinking about we had been working on a lot on enrichment type activities, and so um now i was just so thankful that we sort of had done that groundwork because it's really um so possible to translate these things into you know into online so i love the setup and i think it's putting more ideas in my head which is where i'm kind of at right now i'm like in my vacuum cleaner phase where i'm just trying to suck everything up <laughs> um and you know, kind of put it together to see what what will work for me. And so like my idea was more of the Zoom classes and having it live interactions, but the videos are really a nice, it it's almost takes a lot of the pressure off of, um, of things. And I think for me, it would just be more of a, um, a, a venue to, to showcase the, you know, whatever we, the content that we, can create so um you know now i just know what more things i need to think about i have a little spreadsheet with about a million tabs already with all of the new things that i have to figure out but uh but i'm very very thankful for this whole thing so appreciate it all of I, I love that analogy brazil keep hoovering and troy um i think that i put it in the chat like really kind of I feel like my, my next step is just to continue to remind people to be kind to themselves because you all have prefaced this we all you know the reality of this is, is like we're going through this as a globe I, I've never been in a position in my life that the, that the whole globe is going through the, the same thing and the only thing the only thing that I could actually think of to uh, correlate it to was like the Olympics either the summer or winter Olympics, but if you're not a sports person, you're not attached to that at all. So just reminding people to be kind, like the tech sucks at times, there are the gaps and things like that. Every little thing that you all are doing matters to some, to one person. And if you continue to keep that in mind, we're going to be just fine. So. Yeah. I have to say, Troy, like, I think we're only getting like, 10% of our students um, getting onto our Google Classrooms. But you know what? If that's what we're getting, that's what that's enough. So uh, whatever, who, whoever you're reaching, that's, that's who you're reaching. Thank you, Troy. And um, I have Dolores, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still here. So I, I just really want to try and connect more with the kids because I've really only heard from like four kids out of my whole class and I want to try and start doing more STEM projects and like recording them like and showing the kids because that's what they really like and like I felt really bad because right before this all started we were going to make volcanoes and that was their favorite project. So I have no doubt Dolores is one of my awesome staff members. I have no doubt she's going to still make volcanoes with the kids this year. I just want to say that um, that for me, the next steps is is um, to continue to um, push for recognition, recognition of all the wonderful work that um, that happens in expanded learning, recognition of my own staff and the awesome work that they're doing um, in trying to reach kids and then um, and then just connections um connections with each other and connections with the kids and um these zoom calls have 
have been amazing. And um, just one more time, thanks to Fred and Troy and Ginger and Danley for making this possible for us today. And thank you, Fred, for inviting me to co-host. I hope you all have a wonderful day and, and thanks for sticking around a little bit later. <laughs> no worries. You don't have to thank me, Brett. Thank you for showing up and doing your thing. You were awesome. Give that a big round of applause. She did a good thank job. You. Right. Thank so you. So I know I've kept you 15 minutes too long, so I'm going to let you go. Let's give another big round of applause for our guests, the Danali. Yeah. They did an amazing job. I know you guys are all as inspired as I do. So before I leave, I always like to end these things by just to let you know that I know I experienced it today the way people don't value the work of after school. I'm going to try not to get upset again. If no one else has told you how valuable you are, if no one else has told you how beautiful you are, if no one else has told you that when your kids are not around you, they miss you, they miss you. Let me tell you, you do a valuable thing. You do an amazing thing. And don't you let anyone tell you that you are any less. I appreciate it. If no one else has told you that, thank God for you. Pat yourselves on the back for me. Give yourselves a big hug for me. I appreciate you showing up for this crazy webinar. Thank you, Beth, for coming on and doing your thing. Troy, anything you want to say before you wrap it up? We wrap it up? Just thank you. Continue to keep up the great work. And, you know, if, if you need any resources from Ken, we're here. Awesome. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your weekend.